Hello, students. Welcome back. Welcome to part two of Dr. Tachycardia Presents Fun with P. And I want to continue where we left off with more clinical tests of urine. But first, I want to put on my goggles. Not because I'm so much afraid of pee per se, but I don't want to get some of these chemicals in my eyes. Uh, specifically this one. We're going to do a test for glucose. Uh, it contains sodium hydroxide, so it's like Drano on steroids. I don't want it going into my eye, so you should wear these too if you have to do this sort of test. And uh, <clears throat> of course, glucose test is very important to do. I don't need to tell you about the importance of trying to diagnose diabetes and catching it early. Yes, <clears throat> my father has diabetes type 2. Catching it early helps a lot. So glucose test, and I don't know if you can read the label here on the bottle, but it's a totally appropriate name. They're called clinitest tablets. That is what we use for a test for glucose. Clinitest tablets are used clinically to test for glucose. Very simple test, kind of a fun one to do as well. So in addition to my uh, clinitest tablets I have down here, I also have a color chart over here. And the color chart is because this is a colorimetric test. It makes it easy to figure out how much sugar is in the urine, if any, by checking the colors and checking the numbers by the colors. That way you don't have to do any clinical chemistry if you're working in the back of a doctor's office or something like that. What I have here is two different samples of urine, <coughs> which uh, I know what's in them and you don't. And that's to show you the difference between a positive versus a negative result. A couple of test tubes over here I'm going to use for the experiment. And the first thing that we need to do, the lab pad now states and the directions right here state, is first we add a little bit of urine to the test tubes. So I have two samples here. I'm going to start with, uh, oh, I think I'll start with this one. So I'm going to suck up a little bit of genuine fake urine. The instructions call for five drops of urine. So I'm going to count them off. One, two, three, four, five. We oh, barely caught that in time. In addition, it's called the five drop method. In addition, it calls for a little bit of dilution of our solution. And that's why I have this. I've got some deionized water. And the deionized water let me reposition this because the cap is getting in the way. I add 10 drops of DI water, as we call it, deionized water. One, two, three, four, five, six, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. Like so. <clears throat> Done. Done with the urine anyway. So I'm going to mix it just a little bit the way we mix things with our fingers gently like this. Now for the fun part. The fun part consists of putting this tablet, see I'm using forceps because I know it's loaded with sodium hydroxide. But that's good because it makes it fizz and it makes it pretty, it makes it hot, it makes it react. So I don't know if this will actually work. These are old tablets, but here we go. Oh yeah, it's fizzing, it's going. It looks like Alka-Seltzer having fun. So I'm going to let that go ahead and fizz. Ooh, lots of, oh, it's boiling now. I don't know if you can see it. Pretty cool. Ah, and now it's done boiling. <clears throat> Yay. So that means once it's done boiling, the reaction is over. That's as good as it's going to get. What I'm seeing from this particular aspect is, to me, it looks like uh, blue. <clears throat> so just to be sure, I'm going to bring it on over here to the color chart. And I'm looking down, but I'm trying to match the colors. And to me, it looks like it's negative. What that means, if I move this back, blue is negative. It's negative for sugars. No glucose, sucrose, whatever in this urine. And I need to point something out here. Sometimes people look at that and they see it fizz and they go, wow, it changed. It's blue. It turned blue. What does that mean? It means nothing. 
because it's negative. These tablets have little blue specks in them. They're loaded with copper sulfate, which is uh, blue. <clears throat> so if you got blue, that means no sugar, no reaction. Okay. So uh, we figured out this one is blue and doesn't have any sugar in it. So I'm going to move it over to the test tube rack and I'm going to try doing this again with a different urine sample and hope I can get something a little bit more interesting than blue. It's not everybody's favorite color. I got my dropper, got my other solution. I'm going to count it off. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Took German in high school, so I can make it all the way up to 10, usually without stuttering too much. That's the urine. <clears throat> okay. Next comes the deionized water. Got to dilute it a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, ten. 10. Okay. <clears throat> That's my urine, my water. Now it's time for the fun part. The Clinitest tablets with their... Um, <clears throat> Lots of sodium hydroxide plus the copper sulfate. Let's see if any of that copper reacts with the solution. Fizz. 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 Haha. <laughs> I was beginning to lose hope there, <clears throat> but it did change at the end there. <clears throat> I can tell even from this angle, looking at all the stuff, it's more of an orangish color, right? <clears throat> In fact, if I get down and look at it, I would say, yeah, okay, <clears throat> somewhere between orange and brick red. Okay, so I guess that would be brorange. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going to bring it over here, and now I'm going to hold it up against the color chart, and I'm going to try to figure it out from this weird angle. <clears throat> So from here, it looks like it might be between 1% and 2%. It's not quite blinding orange, like, you know, an orange. So uh, from this angle, I can't see it as well as you, but I'm going to guesstimate. It's about 1%, okay, which is, uh, that's a lot. If your urine is 1% sugar, that's an awful lot, okay? That means one part per 100 or <clears throat> 1%. Hmm, 1,000 milligrams per deciliter, something like that. It's a lot. This would be definitely, for sure, a red flag for diabetes. You'd have to wonder, why so much sugar in this person's urine? It's obviously not just because they had dessert last night. Okay, so that's definitely a positive result for the Clinitest test for urine glucose. Okay, and I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm, like, uh, done with it. I think I proved my point there. That's how you do that test. Pretty easy, thanks to these tablets. Next on my agenda, <clears throat> same idea, only different. If I move uh, just a little bit laterally this way, what I've got set up next, it looks kind of similar, but it's not the same. This also involves using tablets. I don't know if you can see the name of these tablets. <clears throat> these are specifically designed to test for ketones ketones in the urine. If uh, we find ketones in the urine, we call it ketone urea. Makes sense. All right, so this also involves using tablets. However, it's the same thing, only different. This is counterintuitive. You can understand adding droplets to a solution or tablets and watching to see if it fizzes. <coughs> this is slightly different. This is sort of based on the concept of if the mountain won't come to Muhammad. So I have one of these tablets here. I'm going to take it with the forceps, move it over here onto this piece of paper, release it like so. And then I'm going to take my first urine sample. I'm going to get some urine into the dropper like that. Bring it over here to where the tablet is sitting and waiting for me. I'm going to put one or two drops on top of that tablet. I want to be sure it's good and wet. And of course, now I've got actually too much on there, but you know, it's America. More's law. More's better, and too much is perfect. 
So <laughs> there's no doubt now that this tablet is in contact with uh, the solution. And uh, um, waiting and waiting and waiting. <clears throat> the directions say to let it sit for 30 seconds. I like to go a little longer than that, two, three minutes, because these things, they sit in the back of our stock room for years. So you can't always be sure it's going to react as fast as you might think it's going to react. And uh, <clears throat> I know from testing this before this video and before class <clears throat> that if I let this sit here and react and let it continue, what I'm going to get out of that is um, to practice my Spanish a little bit. Nada. Here's a tablet that's been sitting in that urine solution for pushing 20 minutes about. And as you can see, it has not changed to any pretty colors. So I can't really show you the positive result. What I can show you is what you're supposed to do with it, is you get this wet tablet. Over time, it might turn in sort of a tannish color, as this one is indicating here. And then you compare the color to the chart. And right now, I don't need the chart to tell you it's negative. There's no purple in this tablet. That's what you're looking for. Purple lavender <clears throat> as indicated by the chart over here. If it just stays white or tan or beige, it's definitely negative for ketones. OK, so this sample is negative for ketones, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, <clears throat> ketones, much like with the, uh, the pH test I did before, they show up if you've got a lot of keto acids. That is, if your body is burning a lot of fat, part of that metabolism, you get a lot of keto acids. So once again, it's sort of a red flag if you get a positive test for the ketones and a purple tablet, that there's a lot of metabolic acids in the blood and the urine, and you have to look into that to make uh, a further diagnosis of what's causing that. Okay, <clears throat> so that was the test for ketones. Relatively simple, just involves that one little tablet. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to get this uh, out of the way. Oink. <clears throat> next on the list, literally, next in the lab handout would be this. This is going to be a test for hemoglobin. And I've got two different samples here, so I can show you two different possible results. And what I'm going to use for this is these dipsticks. They're called hemosticks. And I don't know if you can see it, that's what they're called hemosticks, and they also have a color chart, which makes it easy to interpret. So unfortunately, the chart's a little bit smaller than we had for the, uh, the glucose clinitest tablets, but it's still visible to the naked eye. Okay, <clears throat> so without looking at that, I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a green color that would indicate that there's either um, hemoglobin in the urine or red blood cells carrying hemoglobin in the urine, which we call either hemoglobinuria, or if it's whole blood cells, hematuria. Okay, we expect to get whole blood cells if the blood cells are being leaked and hemorrhaged into the urinary tract. This happens in women sometimes with a urinary tract infection, a bladder infection. In men, you can have the same sort of result with a prostate infection. Ask me how I know. But I know. <clears throat> That's if you get blood cells, hematuria. If it's just hemoglobin, hemoglobinuria, that implies that the blood cells have burst somewhere in the bloodstream. So you got something going on in the body that's making the blood cells burst and release their hemoglobin. It could be infectious, or depending on your job, it could be chemicals doing the same sort of thing. In any case, finding blood or hemoglobin in the urine is totally abnormal and raises uh, a red flag. But usually the most common suspicion would be, oh, blood and urine, probably UTI. OK, so I'm going to take a couple of these strips out now. Actually, I should probably just leave this. One, two. Technically, I only need two of these things because I only have two samples. Right. There we go. <clears throat> so I've got two of those. 
And I'm going to put the cap back onto this jar because I want to be able to turn it and see the colors without everything spilling all over the floor. So I definitely want to put the cap back on. <laughs> you might want to do that too. Alrighty, <clears throat> so there's our uh, color-coded test. And <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'll start both of these at approximately the same time. First, this one, whoa. On the left, I'm going to dip it, and then I'm going to pull it up and out. The idea is you don't leave it soaking in the urine. You take it out, and then you let it sit. Checking my watch. OK. Next. Whoa. It's shaking. So I must be nervous, or else there's an earthquake. Find out on the news. Dip it, pull it out, sit and wait, and oh, holy guacamole. <clears throat> Let me turn that for you. Yeah. Wow. You see that color? You see that green color? <clears throat> That's amazing. It's amazing that it worked, and it worked so fast. Because um, it says we're right on the bottle. I read this before class. <clears throat> it says, wait for exactly 60 seconds to one minute, whichever comes first. This was nice that it happened in less than a minute. All right, so now for comparative purposes, I'm going to show you first this, the one that I did first, which hasn't done a thing. It started yellow, and it stayed yellow. If I line this up with the yellow, and I read it upside down, it says negative. So there's no hemoglobin in this urine sample. There's no uh, detectable red blood cells either. So if I put that down, try to leave my uh, bottle here, pick this up, and wow, this is really dark. This is going way to the end, and maybe even pegs it off the scale. Okay, I don't know if you can read that. It says large. Okay, that doesn't mean our patient is large. That means it contains a large amount of hemoglobin. So definitely something serious going on there. Major UTI or some other disorder <clears throat> causing a lot of hemoglobin to show up in the urine, which it shouldn't. Okay, so that's the test for hemoglobin. Pretty easy to do, especially if you get such a big color change as this. And it's pretty easy to interpret it. All right, so I'm putting that back down here. <clears throat> that was the test for hemoglobin. And then finally, move this sucker over there a little bit. <clears throat> test for bile salts. And this is a nice, well, they're all easy tests. <clears throat> this one's easy as well. I like it because I used to be a lab technician, and it's cheap. All you need is some uh, powdered sulfur. And then you invest in some of these high-tech cellulose-based dispensing devices. What I've got here is uh, a little bit of urine in one of these teeny tiny 10 ml beakers. Aren't they cute? Bet you don't see beakers that size very often. The idea being, we don't need a whole lot of urine here. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the flat end of this toothpick. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to get a little bit of powdered sulfur on the end of my toothpick, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to try to scoop it out. I'm going to turn it, tap it ever so gently, and let it sit there. And I'm going to wait, and I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to watch it for a couple minutes and see if anything happens. <clears throat> the idea being that we all know water has surface tension. Sure enough. So does urine. Urine is mostly water. <clears throat> and it turns out that bile salts, they, um, they're used a lot by the liver. Bile salts are not really salts. They're an emulsifier. They act like a detergent, like you'd use on dishwashing, that sort of thing. As an emulsifier, bile salts, they break up the surface tension of any water that they're in, just like Dawn dishwashing soap. So if there's bile salts in there, they'll react with the water, they'll break up the surface tension, and then the little particles will dribble down from the top down to the bottom of the beaker. 
And that's what I'm looking for. If they fall to the bottom, that means it's a positive test. There's bile salts in that urine. If they stay on the top, that means there's surface tension, no bile salts, negative test for bile salts. Okay, <clears throat> well, that concludes my second edition of uh, Fun with P. And I know it's a Friday afternoon. You're probably eager to get going and everything, but I want to, <clears throat> want to say thank you and thanks for peeing with me. <laughs>